Hi and welcome to Carnegie in our interview with Bergman and Beving. My name is Mark Salmerud. I'm an analyst here at the bank. I got with me Magnus Söderlund, who is CEO at Bergman. Hi, Magnus. Hi, nice to be here. Yeah, very warm welcome. Thank you. Uh, you, you released uh, earnings this morning. Yes. Uh, good report. Uh, minus 3% organic growth. A pickup in trend. Uh, but you postponed a little bit the market recovery compared to before in, in, in the language. What are you seeing in the market? So what are you seeing in terms of demand? Mm. As you start saying, it was, uh, I believe, a quite a good, strong report. We have increased earning now for 19 consecutive quarters. And we have increased profitability, uh, return on capital. And we also have increased earnings per share now because mm -hmm. we have easier comparable financial nets uh, going forward. But then related to your second comments about the, the market development, we, we still feel that uh, uh, the construction sector is kind of not picking up. And I would say also the industrial sector in the Nordics is lacking. So I hoped uh, this springtime that we should see a pickup during the autumn. Uh, uh, we don't see that. Uh, then I hoped after summer that we see a pickup by uh, New Year, but uh, I'm uh, very hesitant in in, in, in that judgment currently. So, so my, my hope on, and expectation is that we see a pickup in the beginning of 2025. Uh, with that said then, as you mentioned, we have an organic uh, kind of decline this quarter by 3%. And that is very much in line with the kind of what we see in the market as such. So we say we are on par on kind of the market development in the Nordic currently. Mm -hmm. So what we have been talking about the f before, the outfacing of, 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 of unprofitable products, that journey is more or less done, but not entirely done, if I understand it. Correctly. Yeah, as you said, we have been working during uh, my, my kind of last three years with phasing out uh, low margin, high volume products, and that has improved the gross margin with 8% in the group during that time. And that's mainly due to organical kind of improvements. Uh, but we are kind of coming to an end now regarding uh, that type of journey. Uh, still, there are some improvement opportunities in the group. And, and then uh, with uh, you know highly profitable acquisitions going forward, will also enable to us to enhance the gross margin going forward. But it will be a kind of a lower pace mm -hmm. than we have seen historically. And if we pick up on that, on M&A, you've done three acquisitions so far this yes. fiscal year. Uh, and one of them is quite big. Mm. Talk a little bit about the M&A environment, because this is obviously a key key mm. driving for you. Mm. I mean, it's, it's partly quite a demanding climate currently, since uh, many companies are facing a slower kind of uh, demand in, in the markets. Uh, so uh, several of our current dialogue is kind of put on hold up and see that we see, you know, the market starts to pick up again. So I think it's a little bit wait and see uh, in, in some situations now regarding acquisitions. Then um, f many companies are not facing any kind of major decline in the, in the demands. So there we are, you know, ready to, to go ahead and make acquisition, even if the kind of general market is a little bit weaker. Is it fair to say that if you look at targets, <coughs> that with the current uncertainty we're seeing in the market, it's not maybe not the price tag itself, but rather it's more maybe taking longer to close acquisitions is that how you should see it yeah longer to close but more uh, is more on our side actually mm -hmm. uh, we would like to feel uh, and feel comfortable that this uh, this is high quality also when the market pick up mm -hmm. because i think you said on the call that you have some targets which you're talking to which are kind of put on hold and we've seen that before where where you have a big uncertainty in the market and then you kind of wait a little bit and then it opens up and then we see several acquisitions. It's the same kind of situation here. Yeah, there yeah. are some similarities. I mean, they, they are very cautious on acquiring high quality companies. We, we don't need to acquire a company if we don't find the right quality to the right price tag. So we're very occupied on, on securing the quality in the acquisitions that we make. And, and part of that quality process is that we are kind of more into wait and see and, and make sure that it, it's kind of the earnings that we expect mm -hmm. uh, also going forward. But at the same time, you do have the target of 50 to 80 million krona in EBITDA in, in add-on from acquisitions. And just using the 15%, and uh, we don't know exactly what it is, but using the 15% on the ones that you've done so far, you're 
not really there, but almost. And as you said, there are targets which are performing. So, so in no way this machine is is stopping. You, we should expect more. Yeah, we are still, you know, aiming to to acquire a line with our targets. That's fifty to eighty million earnings per annum. So, so that's still in the in the game. Mm -hmm. And and if we look at the list of targets that you're having. Uh, where is your focus right now? Because I know we talked about before about the Nordics versus outside of the Nordics and you've been doing some acquisitions in the UK, you've been moving back to Nordics and we've seen more in your home markets. Where are we now in terms of focus and what does the list look like? Yeah, I would say we are kind of active in all the markets and all the markets is for us mainly than the Nordics and in, in Great Britain. So we mm -hmm. see opportunities in all those markets currently. Okay, okay. Uh, and if we move down a little bit on, on, on in the P&L, uh, you, you reached margin, margin target for the first time to 10%. Um, and you talk about having reached a new level and that we should kind of expect this kind of level going forward. What was the main drivers behind the rise in the margin? I mean, it's been a steady trend, but still. Yeah, I would say it's it's uh, the majority of this is organic improvements and uh, mainly then that we improve the gross margin in the companies that we, we currently own. We are currently 32 companies in, in our group. And, and uh, if you have followed us over time, you can see that the organic top line growth has been negative in, in several quarters. And, and that is because we, pr we prioritize profit growth before revenue growth. And uh, by increasing the gross margin and then uh, partly reduce cost on a kind of uh, measuring the organic uh, cost base, uh, we have uh, been able to improve the profit margin as such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just one comment, you mentioned the, the profit margin. The profit margin we have communicated is the EBIT margin of 10% and we are still not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not on a trailing basis, no. but on, on this particular quarter yes. you, you were there, yeah. but then if you look at the trailing yes. trend, you still have some gap to yes. close. And, and I if we move on that, because you had the target for of, of uh, 10, 545. Yes. Uh, and you're closing in on, on the margin target and also on the 500. But what is needed, uh, and then you have the 45, which, which we'll come back to, but if what's needed for you to get there? I, I would say, uh, to be honest, I mean, th that, that target in terms of 500 million in EBIT and 10% and EBIT margin is one and a half year down the road. Mm -hmm. and, and we will need to see some type of pickup in the market to get there. Uh, and that is, you know, in, in the cards, I would say. And then to get our profitability target, that's the 45%. Uh, we have that one year later, so we have two and a half years to get there. And uh, uh, that we will close that gap through acquisitions of highly profitable companies in combination with continue to improve the profitability in the company that we own. And one uh, major uh, element in that is improve the capital efficiency. And uh, that is uh, actually to increase the ITO, the inventory turnover, mm -hmm. that is still on a lower level than pre-corona. So there are, you know, a potential to get there, and we should uh, we should get there mm -hmm. over time. But but the main here is going to be acquisitions which come in with a higher profitability and, and drive the target, and then on add-on you will have some internal improvements as well. Yeah, uh, in terms of margin and, and, and absolute, you know, profit uh, and such, uh, we, uh, that will be acquisition combination with organic improvements. Mm -hmm. In terms of, of capital efficiency, it will be mainly organic mm -hmm. because the companies we acquire is already uh, high, high, high kind of capital efficiency. And if we, if we look at the 500 million EBITDA, in operating profit and you do need some <coughs> I would assume that you need just a not a major turn up in the market is not volume is not the main driver here but you need a little bit of pickup yes. and then acquisitions in line with what you have communicated th that is the 50 to 80 yes. that's what's going to take you there yes excellent and then if we talk about cutting costs, because you also keep adjusting the cost base, and you do, you, you were talking about seeing some cost being impacting already this quarter. But how much is is there still some more to go? Yeah, it's correct that we are looking uh, at um, 
the cost situation in some of our companies. We are using our capital allocation model that is named the focus model internally. And company with low profitability, uh, i.e. have a, a low profit or working capital, we don't want them to grow top line. We want them to improve their cost base and improve their margins. So that's phasing out low margin, high volume products typically and uh, adjusting the cost base. So if we look at our companies, uh, we have some larger companies that are in the, the red zone, we mm -hmm. call it. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not good enough in capital efficiency and they need to focus on the cost base. Then the majority of our companies is on green in our capital allocation model. That's that, that those are the companies that is above the profit of working capital 45%. They are capital efficient enough them, uh, those companies we want to grow, mm -hmm. grow top line typically, both organically or through add-on acquisitions. So there we allocate capital to make them grow and they shouldn't cut costs typically. They should kind of uh, expand the cost base to invest, to grow the business. So it's really uh, an agenda company by company and not s uh, kind of across the whole group as such. But if we are in a situation where we stand right now, where I think you were saying on the call that there is some cost savings which you have done, which is not yet affecting the P&L, but is still to come. And if we take that we are in kind of a situation where you had you had you continue to have an improvement in, in organic growth, knock on wood, and then you have some more cost savings coming in and then continuous acquisitions, then you would also expect the margin the margin trend to continue as well. Yeah, as I write in my CA notes mm -hmm. in this report, I mean, we are also preparing ourselves for the market to pick up, to make sure that we can leverage that pickup when it, when it comes. So, so uh, I mean, uh, I, my expectation is that we shouldn't expand the cost base uh, in a significant way when, when, when the market is coming back and the volume is coming back and that will have a great effect on the group as such. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyone expects, I mean including myself, and expect, I mean of course the market will come back at some point in time, uh, but, but just to be clear there's no tangible signs right now that we are seeing that pick up no, or that it's coming. Really. You can see that in some of the, 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 the sub-market as such, but if you look on the aggregated level it's kind of some is picking up a little bit, but mm -hmm. some is even slowing down a little bit. So on the aggregated level, as you say, it's quite flat. Okay, flat sequentially is not getting worse. Yes. But the timing is still is uncertain. Yes. So you see it. All right, Magnus, uh, thank you very much for coming here to talk thank to you. us. And, and uh, yeah, again, a very good quarter. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.